My name is Matt Thomas, the founder of Brawl for a Cause and the first American to compete in the Chess Boxing World Championship. So I'll start from the beginning. A few years back, I got an injury. I dislocated my shoulder in a boxing match and I had to get surgery to repair it. While I was recovering from surgery, I spent a lot of time watching Netflix and YouTube. And while I was watching YouTube one day, on my sidebar, YouTube recommended a video I might like. The video was about chess boxing, and when I clicked on it, I immediately fell in love with the sport. I watched that video, I watched about a hundred more, and then I watched those hundred videos dozens of times, and I knew that when I got out of that air cast, uh, when I recovered, that I was going to compete in the sport. And I reached out to the founder of chess boxing, Ipe. Ipe told me that the world championship for chess boxing was coming up in July 2018, and that no American had ever competed in it. So if I wanted to sign up, I would be the first American to compete in the chess boxing world championship. So I signed up. I started training. My chess coach, Carlos Perdomo, was a, a national champion for Colombia. He played chess all over the world, and he started an organization called Chess Atlanta. So in addition to Carlos, I got two other chess coaches to help me out. The vice president of Georgia Chess, David Hayter, and my, my sparring partner for training, uh, Elena. With the help of these chess minds, these, these people that were a lot smarter than I was, uh, I was able to improve about 400 ELO or FIDE rating points over the course of my eight week training. Also during training, I had other coaches for other aspects of this competition. So my strength and conditioning coach was a former brawler, a guy named John Colwich, total beast. This guy, we, we worked together a couple times a week. He had me flipping tires around tracks. He had me doing things with a kettlebell I didn't even know were possible. Get it done, let's go! It just hammered me into the, the type of athlete that was gonna be able to compete in a three-day tournament and, and not tire out and know how to recover. And, and John absolutely killed it in terms of uh, helping to prepare me for the, the Chess Boxing World Championship. In addition to John, I trained with incredible coaches. Uh, one was a former Olympic coach for Cuba, uh, Coach Isidore. He's one of my favorite boxing coaches that I've ever worked with because boxing is a way of, way of life to him. It's, it's like dancing or eating or breathing and learning the offensive technique and, and footwork from Isidore absolutely uh, was a game changer. So as I was preparing, it was really important to try to mimic the, the, the cycle between really high heart rate, high adrenaline states and, and calming myself down and sitting back down at the board and, and focusing on board position, on candidate moves, on thinking moves ahead. And in order to mimic this, I was able to recruit some, uh, some sparring partners like uh, Elena, who's the female state champion for chess in the state of Georgia, um, and uh, another former brawler and Team USA cornerman, Rob French. Uh, so I, I, what, what I could do is I could spar with Rob in the ring for three minutes. And afterwards, I could sit down and play a game against Elena. And uh, as we got more practice with that, we could actually mimic an entire championship bout for chess boxing. So I would start on the board. I would start playing a game against Elena at three minutes. We'd, we'd freeze the board. I'd put on my gloves. Rob would beat me up a little bit. And then I'd come back to the board, keep playing Elena, back to Rob, keep boxing. And uh, we, we would go until there's checkmate or, uh, well, Neither of us knocked each other out, but <laughs> we, did, we did land some shots that made us a little dizzy. That definitely made chess a little bit more difficult. So I felt ready to go to India. When the time came to, to take the 22-hour flight, um, I, had, I had so many emotions running through me. I, 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 I was looking back at this eight-week journey um, where so much transformation, so much growth and progress occurred. Welcome to India. So when I arrived in India, uh, I, I arrived about five days early and Kevin and I met up and, and started training and we met some of the other chess boxers from other countries. One of my favorite memories of those days leading up to the tournament was when Team Russia and Team USA went onto the rooftop of our hotel 
and we had about a two hour training session to, together where Russians were holding the mitts for, for Americans and uh, you know barking orders at us in Russian and we were just trying to keep up and trying to prepare ourselves for, for something that I, I don't know if anyone was really uh, cognizant of what, what it would take to actually win this tournament. So we, we were doing our best together. Going into the event, I definitely thought that boxing was going to be my strength. I, I was in great shape. I had, uh, I would say, more boxing experience than I had chess experience. You know, I, I thought if I can hold my own in chess, maybe I can I can get an advantage on the boxing side of things and, and end up winning the matches. In my first round, uh, it was actually the semifinals. I was matched up against a 24-year-old serviceman in the Indian Army, and uh, this this gentleman named Rahul um, had won seven boxing tournaments in India. Uh, he, he, had, he had been a medalist for, for the Indian boxing program. And uh, that, that scared me. I, I, I thought boxing was going to be my strength. But, um, but when I saw him and when I looked into his eyes, um, all that fear disappeared. I, I, I knew what I had to do, and I knew fear was just going to hold me back. So uh, we, we sat down on the chessboard for the first round. Um, I opened with the London system. And that is the only system that I practiced the entire uh, training period. So I, I knew it inside out. And so I already had my hand hovering over my bishop when Rahul made his, his second move of the game. And he made the one move, <laughs> the one response, where I don't put my bishop on f4. And, um, and I'd already touched my bishop as soon as he hit the timer. And in, in chess boxing, one of the rules is you touch it, you, you have to move it. And, and so I had no good square for my bishop, and I actually, I have to put my bishop on a really bad square. And I clog up my development, and, and I start having this flood of uh, all these thoughts of, of what could go wrong going through my head. And I, I breathe, I calm myself down, and I say, you know, I, I, I have to recover from this. And, and as the game continues, uh, Rahul makes some inaccurate moves, which, which allow me to get ahead in development. And then right before the end of the chess round, he, he blundered his queen. He put it on a square that my bishop controlled, and I was able to, uh, to take his queen right before the end of the, the first chess round. The bell rings, they, they freeze the game, they freeze the timer, and we, we have to go to our corners to put on our gloves. Uh, and Rob tells me, you got him in chess, he's gonna come after you in boxing. And so I, I mentally prepare myself, I'm, uh, I'm like, okay, you know, I have to survive this round because if I can get back to the chessboard, I think I can, I think I can checkmate him. So that was my goal. Uh, and I went out, and the very first punch that Rahul throws is a left hook that catches me clean and stuns me. And uh, and I stagger back a little bit, and I say, okay, this is real. Like here we go. I start getting really busy with my jab. I I, I start throwing it out, making him think about every step he takes, every punch he throws. I had reach. I had speed on him. Um, but he had, he had experience and he had technique on me. So he was pretty good at timing, uh, pretty good at, at stringing some punches together. About two minutes into it, I, I noticed that Rahul gets really tired. He gets really winded. And this is where that, uh, that Cole Witch uh, conditioning comes in. I, I had all the energy in the world um, to finish out the, uh, the, the end of the, the second round, which was the, the first boxing round. And, uh, and I ended up landing a, a series of punches all strung together that, that made the, the referee step in and, and stop the fight and give my opponent a standing eight count. So right before the end of the, the boxing round, I got another little win, and I knew that um, my opponent was tired and that he might make some more chess mistakes. And, and so when the bell rung, I took off my gloves, I sat back down on the chessboard, I started taking really deep uh, breaths, very slow breaths to calm myself down to refocus on the board and to get ready to um, think about my candidate moves and work towards checkmate. And uh, it took, took maybe five or six moves to get to a position where I could see a clear checkmating path. And I, I walked his king over to uh, the C file. I, I, I kind of backed him into a corner and I ended up checkmating him with my knight. Uh, I sacrificed one knight to get him to a square uh, where he had nowhere else to go, and I, I moved my knight in for a checkmate. I was really proud uh, to win at least one fight. When I signed up, I didn't know if I was going to win any fights. Uh, I, my, my goal was definitely to win at least one. 
Um, and, and so in that moment, uh, one of my goals for the Chess Boxing World Championship was accomplished. So I, I woke up the next day and I reported back to the stadium to find out when my final bout would be. And when I asked the organizer, he told me that we were the final bout of the evening because of who I was matched up against. The boxing coach for the Indian chess boxing team was my uh, final competitor. And uh, he was a 34-year-old guy. He had uh, about two decades more boxing experience than I had. I remember having nerves and getting really intense right before the first match. So the first round begins, we're on the chessboard. I, I draw white again, so I open up with the London, London system again. And in this match, I, I could definitely tell that my opponent was a stronger chess player than my last opponent. I wasn't able to get as big of an advantage going into the first boxing round. Uh, I think I was up a piece, maybe a piece and a pawn. But I liked my position and I knew that because this guy was a stronger boxer, my strategy was again, throw, jab, throw the jab a lot, stay busy, keep dancing, stay away from him, and try to wear him out like my last opponent. I, I remember putting on my gloves. Um, I remember the first boxing round beginning. and. I remember something being a little irregular about how my opponent came out. He, um, again, the, the very first punch that he threw landed clean on me. And uh, it was a straight left hand. And it, it landed on my chin. And, and I heard this yelling from my corner. Uh, and it was Ralph's voice just yelling, South Paul, South Paul, South Paul. And, and I looked down at his feet and I realized that he's left handed. And I'm a regular fighter, so I'm right-handed, my power punch is my right hand, my jab is my left. And, and fighting a southpaw changes almost everything. So that first punch really caught me by surprise. I, I had to readjust and, and, and acclimate really quickly. I started to see how his punches look, but he, he's still beating me. He, he has landed a, lot, landed a lot more punches than I had uh, in that first round. He was timing his counter punches really well. so. Uh, whenever I would open myself up, he would make me feel it, uh, which, which made me a little bit more scared to throw my punches because, you know, someone was coming back every time. And uh, even though I don't know how the judges scored that first boxing round against my opponent, I, I do expect that he won that first boxing round. But there was one redeeming punch that I had right at the end of the round, right before the bell rung. Uh, my, my opponent dropped his, his left hand, his guard hand. And I, I remember throwing this right hook that caught him uh, right above the chin. So, um, you know, side of the head, maybe, maybe close to the temple. And I remember looking at his eyes, and I'll never forget this look, but just for you know, half a second, maybe a full second, he wasn't in there. And maybe, maybe two seconds later, the bell rings, and he, he kind of staggers off to his corner, and I go back to my corner. I, I take my gloves off. I'm taking deep slow, calming breaths again to, to refocus back to the chessboard. And we sit down at the chessboard. The, the ref says, okay, you know, go. And, and it's my opponent's move. And he picks up one of the white pieces and he moves the white piece and he hits his timer. And I remember seeing that and, and, and thinking, am I, am I crazy? I thought I was white. And I, I checked again, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely white. Why did he just move a white piece? And it was in that moment where I was like, I just gotta close this. I gotta close it as quick as possible. This is my opportunity. And I'm frantically calculating, how do I end this as quickly as possible? How, how do I corner his king? And uh, I start getting really aggressive. I start pushing him back into a corner, uh, walking my, my queen and my rook down the board and closing in on his king. And it takes about six or seven more moves, but, um, but I end up checkmating him. And I remember holding out my hand and just having this wave of energy. Like, this is it. This is, this is the end of the journey. This is the end of eight weeks of training. Uh, th this is why everyone um, donated. This is why everyone sent words of support. This is why uh, these friends flew across the world to be in my corner. It was an incredible feeling, especially going into something that I did not expect to win, fighting for something that was bigger than myself, and knowing that if I lost, it, it was still a win because of, of the training that I went through, the, the transformation that I experienced, and, um, and, and the act of competing for something that I believed in.